1 Corinthians. For I'm receiving from the Lord what I have given unto you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice had a sight of saying, This chalice is the new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For the often may be this bread and drink this chalice. You proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your Spirit. Nice to see you all this morning. Today's Mass has been offered in thanksgiving for the healthcare workers. And we're celebrating the feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Let us begin by calling to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for our healthcare workers. May the venerable intercession of the glorious Virgin Mary come to our aid, we pray, O Lord, so that fortified by her protection, we may reach the mountain, which is Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Readings from the book of Exodus. Although Moses and Aaron performed various wonders in Pharaoh's presence, the Lord made Pharaoh obstinate, and he would not let the children of Israel leave his land. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one, and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month, and then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. It shall not be eaten raw or boiled, but roasted whole with its head and shanks and inner organs. None of it must be kept beyond the next morning. Whatever is left over in the morning shall be burned up. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat it like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Responsorial song. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Precious in the eyes of the Lord 
is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. To you will I offer sacrifice of saint thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Please stand. disciples are doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? How he went into the house of God and ate the bread of offering, which neither he nor his companions, but only the priests could lawfully eat? Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests serving at the temple violate the Sabbath and are innocent? I say to you, Something greater than the temple is here. If you knew what this meant, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would not have condemned these innocent men, for the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Old Testament is very important to understand our faith, and especially today's reading. In order to understand the Mass, you have to understand the Passover. And today's first reading provides beautifully the background to the Mass and to the Passover. And Jesus becoming that Lamb of Sacrifice offered once and for all at every Mass for us. And in the Gospel, Jesus was always at odds with the Pharisees. When he dined with sinners, when he healed the sick, uh, when the disciples went through the grain uh, fields and eat corn, uh, they, they, they were, he, was, they were, he was always in trouble with them. They accused him of blasphemy for claiming to be the Son of God, for forgiving sins in God's name. And, and Jesus uh, makes a very striking statement here. He said, you have something greater than the temple here. And the temple was considered one of the wonders of the world. I mean, it was, it was really some statement to make. And of course, Jesus was referring to himself. Of course, God is greater than anything human. God is greater than any temple. And Jesus was pointing to himself as God. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Let us pray for all the recently deceased. Yesterday we had the funeral for Betty Van Zandt. Also, um, Rosemary Dido, a long-time parishioner, died yesterday, and so did um, D. Um, Raspoli. Um, D. is a young lady, and her parents come to church here very regularly, very active, and D. used to come from Gulfport to be with them at church. So we pray for her eternal rest and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who are sick and have asked for special prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all the healthcare workers, may they do everything they can to keep us safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the people dealing with the upsurge in the coronavirus and for people dealing with other illnesses like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, cancer, Crohn's disease, kidney disease, may we find cures for these human scourges. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the successful completion of our new church, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For God's guidance and direction, especially with all the quads, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the renewal of our church and for all people to be able to hand on the faith to the coming generation, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for your blessings. Help us to live in your love this day through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. May my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands, the glory and the glory of His name, for our good and good of all the Holy Church. As we honor the memory of the Mother of your Son, we pray, O Lord, that the oblation of this sacrifice may, by your grace, make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. And especially as we celebrate the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thanksgiving hymn of praise. For truly, to the earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age when you looked on the loneliness of your handmaid and gave us to her the author of our salvation your son jesus christ our lord to him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever may our voices we pray join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim holy holy holy, holy, holy lord Francis, our Pope, Lewis, our Bishop, 
and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 As we prepare to receive Jesus Christ in the Holy Eucharist, let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom. Our Father, the Lord of heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and save all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit, let's offer each other sign of faith. Amen. Lamb of God, slain for the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my memory, but I want to say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Like Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive the heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve wardenly the mystery of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now for our aid. Good morning. Good morning. Catholic Church is at it again. Today's reading starts off that the, the first day of the month or the first month of the year. Moses went through a whole lot of stuff before he got to that point. Plagues. He, he went and spoke with the Pharaoh. It, it wasn't real easy to walk in and speak to the Pharaoh. I mean... You want to go talk to Joe Biden? Just go to Washington, D.C. and walk up to the White House. It, it isn't that easy. Well, he went and told Pharaoh, let my people go. We want to go praise our God. And he said, no. And Moses said, look, there's some things that are going to happen. Well, first of all, he threw his, his rod or his walking staff down on the floor and it turned into a snake. So Pharaoh said, huh, so what? He calls his magicians up there and two or three of them threw their staff down and turned into a snake. Moses' the snake ate their snake and Moses reached down and picked the snake up and it was a staff again. 
but their snakes were gone. Anyway, the first plague was Moses took his staff and touched the Nile River and it turned into blood. Okay, it didn't turn into red water. It turned into blood. Fish can't live in blood. The fish turned belly up and came up. The people had nothing to drink. Every water turned to blood. Pharaoh said, so what? No, your people can't go. So, Moses went back and said, okay, frogs came out of the streams, the rivers, frogs, a bunch of them. Ladies, how would you like to go to bed tonight and sleep with 20 frogs in your bed? That's what, that, the frogs went into their homes. The frogs crawled into their beds and they slept with frogs. And Pharaoh said, no, you people can't go. So the third plague was gnats. You know, we, we get those no see -ums and get out on the golf course and, they, and, and, and you can't see them, but boy, you can feel them. Well, gnats covered Egypt, not, not, not just the neighborhood, the whole country, gnats. You open your mouth to speak and gnats go in your mouth and yuck. And Pharaoh said, no, I will not let your people go. The fourth plague was flies. And the father puts a, a cover over the chalice for the wine made into the blood of Christ because of, of, there may be a fly in the, in the This was flies, just like the gnats. They were all, they, were, they covered the ground. When you walked, the flies crunched under your feet. Pharaoh said no. So, then <coughs> Moses gave pestilence of the livestock. The sheep, the goats, the cattle just started dying. And what happens when, when a, an animal dies? The flies come. So, and, and they don't smell real good either. Pharaoh said no. Then Moses took dust and threw it up in the air. It came down at boils on the people. I, I haven't had a boil since I was a kid, but I used to get boils in my ear. You go swimming in, in the Gulf, and you get that sand in your ear and it, and it infects it and you get boiled and, and that hurts. Well, everybody, and I'm not talking about just one or two people. I'm talking about everybody got boils all over their body and, and they, they hurt. Pharaoh said, no, your people can't go. He wanted to go out in the desert for a two or three days walk and pray. And Pharaoh said, no. Okay. Then Moses pointed his staff up to the sky and it started hailing lightning, thunder. We know what lightning and thunder are. But it hailed. And if, if an animal was outside, the hail killed him. If a man was outside, the hail killed him. It really hailed big as golf balls, baseballs. Came and I don't know if you've ever been hit with by the little pea-sized hell we get here, but it hurts. And it didn't just hurt, it killed them. Pharaoh said, no. The eighth plague was locusts. You see any grass outside? You see grass over there? None over here. They've been machines running up and down and the gravel. Locusts ate everything in Egypt. There was nothing green, no grass, no nothing. 
Pharaoh said, no. Pharaoh, no, Pharaoh said, on this one, Pharaoh said, okay, the men can go out and pray. And Moses said, all of Israel, all the Israelites will pray to our God. Pharaoh said, no, uh-uh, you can take the men. How many men we got in here? One, two, three, four, six, seven. Maybe eight or ten men. Y'all can go, but the women have to stay. The children have to stay. The livestock have to. Moses said, no. We're all going. So, here we go. Pharaoh said, no. Everybody can't go. So, Moses the Lord God told Moses what to do and he did it and darkness fell upon the land. Darkness. I'm talking about he couldn't see his hand in front of his face over the entire land. No one could see anything for an entire week. They, it was dark. You walk into a post and you didn't know what you had hit. Pharaoh said no. So then we come to where we are in today's reading. The angel of death went through. That's why they sprinkled the blood on the lentils, the lentils that post above the, the door. They sprinkled blood so that the angel of death would know that it was Israelites inside that house. The firstborn of everyone else the firstborn of every sheep, of every goat, of every horse, the firstborn of every cow died that night. Pharaoh's son died that night. And Pharaoh said, get out of here, go. Now, so the Israelites went and you figure, how many Israelites was there in, in, in Egypt? You need, you need to read that chapter. 600,000 men, along with their wives, their children, their sheep, their goats, their livestock, left Egypt. Now, 600,000, just, just the men. That's Hancock County, Harrison County, and Jackson County. The entire Gulf Coast of the state of Mississippi is maybe 600,000 people, men, women, and children. This was 600,000 men. Can you imagine the vacancies? How many houses were left empty? Oh, and, and, then, and then the the Egyptians, they were accustomed to waking up in the morning and having their bath water drawn for them and having a slave come in and, and dress the ladies and what, do their hair. And they weren't there. The, the Israelites had left. They were gone. And they went to Pharaoh and said, hey man, look, you let all our slaves go. And, and my wife is, and she says no all the time now. I mean, I never, not, a woman hadn't had that many headaches in her life. We need our slaves back. So Pharaoh got his army together, all of his chariots and his charioteers, and they went to get the Israelites. You remember the story about the parting of the Red Sea and what happened? We're talking about, we're talking about 600,000 men. That had to be a crowd. It, had, it didn't take them an hour and a half to walk out of Egypt. It probably took them a week to get um, can you imagine getting together eight or ten times the Super Bowl? Every seat in the Super Bowl filled eight times. And, and how long does it take to empty the Super Bowl after a football game? 
how would you like to have that many people? And Moses had to feed them. And they, they got kind of angry about that. That we will go into the story of manna later. But the big thing is Pharaoh. He was more powerful in his mind than God. None of us are. And he learned that the hard way. Thank you very much. Very good, R.A. We don't want any plagues around here, that's for sure. Got a cute email here. During a play date, a mother checked on her daughter and friends and overheard the planned wedding. The vows went like this. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be held against you. You have the right to an attorney. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Go and make disciples. Thanks. Thanks. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, 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 Spirit,